In this video, we're going to continue our work with statics in equilibrium and look at finding unknown forces and angles. In the first question, we have now a particle that's in equilibrium and we need to find the value of theta and the value of p. So if we look here, we've got now our particle and we have three forces acting on it. We've got a 4 newton force and we have an angle of 45 degrees. We've got a force of p newtons and an angle of theta and then we have 7 newtons and that's in the negative x direction. So it's parallel now to the x-axis. So if this is in equilibrium, when we use Newton's second law, f is equal to ma, resolving in any direction will be equal to zero. If a particle is in equilibrium, the resultant force is zero. There's no acceleration. So all I'm going to state now is Newton's second law. We've got Newton's second law, f is equal to ma. If in equilibrium, and I'm just going to jot this here, if in equilibrium, if we resolve now vertically, this will be equal to zero. If we resolve horizontally, this too will be equal to zero. So that's now the requirement for the particle to be in equilibrium. So let's consider now resolving vertically. So if we look now at the forces acting on the particle, what I'm going to do is just drop a perpendicular down here, and then we're going to have one just here. So we can see that the 7 Newton force is not going to be included here. It's acting purely horizontally. So what we're going to have then is this force. We've got now a 4 Newton force inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. I want to have now the vertical component of this force. The vertical component will be 4 sine of 45 degrees. Just consider this to be a little right angle triangle. Hypotenuse is 4. We want the opposite. Therefore, it's 4 sine of 45. I'm now going to subtract away the force, which is going to be P, and we've got an angle of theta, so that will be P sine theta, and that now will be equal to 0. So all we've done now is use Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. I've resolved taking the upward direction to be positive. I've said now 4 sine 45 minus P sine theta must be equal to 0 as it's in equilibrium. So at this stage, what we could write now is the following. We could write that p sine theta would be equal now to 4 sine of 45. Now, the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And of course, you can find that value on a calculator. If you already know it, though, you can just write it down. So we can say p sine theta is 2 root 2. And I'm going to call this one equation 1. So all I've done is resolve now vertically and set it equal to 0. Let's now consider resolving horizontally, and I'm going to take this in the positive x direction. So we're looking now at the horizontal component of this force. The horizontal component of the force is 4 cos of 45 degrees. All we're looking at now is essentially the adjacent of this little right angle triangle. We've got now the force P acting in the same direction. We want the horizontal component of the force, so that's going to be plus P cos theta. We don't yet know what theta is. And now we subtract away now the 7. The 7 is in the opposite direction, minus 7, and that's equal to 0. So what I need to do is solve for p, and I need to solve for theta. I'm going to solve for theta first. So what I'm going to do here is write that p cos theta will be equal to, adding 7 to both sides, now the cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 as well. So what I'm going to do is subtract this quantity from both sides, and that's going to give me now minus 2 root 2. Depending on which exam you're doing uh, will depend on how much work that you need to show. All I'm going to do is just use this result here, and again, do put it through a calculator or show four workings. This is going to be now our equation 2. So we have an expression for p sine theta and p cos theta. I'm now going to use a trig identity. We've seen in the past that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So what I'm going to do is find theta from this. So I'm going to do now equation 1 divided by equation 2. So we're going to have now p sine theta over p cos theta will be equal now to 2 root 2 over 7 minus 2 root 2. So at this stage now, the p's are going to cancel, and I can write here that tan theta will be equal to 2 root 2 
over 7 minus 2 root 2. So at this stage now, all I have to do is simply evaluate this on a calculator. So we can say that theta will be equal to the inverse tan, so tan to the minus 1, of 2 root 2 over 7 minus 2 root 2. So make sure the calculator is in degrees mode, and we'll do the inverse tan of 2, then we're going to have root 2, over now 7 minus the 2 root 2. We'll go ahead now, find that value, let's come out of here, and that gives us now 34.1 degrees, correct to one decimal place. So theta is equal to 34.1 degrees, and that's given to 1 dp. So all I've done is found theta, now I can go ahead and use equation 1 or equation 2 to find now the value of p. I'm going to use this one, just write in here equation 1. We've got p will be equal to now 2 root 2 over the sine of theta. Well, that's going to be for 34.1 dot 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 and so on and so forth. So I'm going to just store this in the calculator in case I make an error. Shift store a, so that's in the calculator. And I can say now that p is 2 root 2 and then we'll have now over the sine of the angle which is going to be a and that will give me now 5.04 so we'll say that p is going to be equal to 5.04 dot 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 therefore p will be equal to 5.0 newtons and that again it's given to one decimal place we're not asked for a level of accuracy um, if we needed to obviously we can alter that so we're solving now, given that this particle is in equilibrium. We state these two facts here, we go ahead, we resolve horizontally and vertically, we have simultaneous equations, and we can solve from there. So nice question and a typical example of one of the more challenging ones that we might see. OK, let's move on to another one. This time we have now an inclined plane. We've got now the y direction, the x direction, we have now force p newtons, q newtons and 10 newtons. The angle is 45. What I'm going to do is just go ahead now and put on the perpendicular just here. So this is the perpendicular to the plane. There are lots of different ways that you could approach this. I like to just put the angle on here. If this now angle is going to be 45, this one too is 45. If you wanted, you could put this all on the horizontal. So you could see this now as the plane. What we have is now the force P Newtons, we have the force Q Newtons, and then we have the force acting down, which is going to be 10 Newtons. So what we've done here is simply created an angle right here, and that angle is going to be 45 degrees. So what we'll have is the following. We've got now 45 degrees, and we've got now... Q and we've got P. So what we need to do is find the value of Q and the value of P given that this particle now is in equilibrium. So just consider now that it's just stuck in this place. So we'll assume it's static, it's not moving up, it's not moving down, it's in equilibrium. So you've got 10 Newton force. So if you want you can see it like so or you can just draw your force uh, forces diagram like that. That's a 90 degree right angle. So what we're going to do first now is state Newton's second law. We've got F is equal to MA. If in equilibrium, if I resolve, so let's just write this, if in equilibrium, resolving now horizontally, we'll have a resultant of zero. If we resolve vertically, we'll have now a resultant of zero. So with this one, I've got the choice where to start. If I now resolve vertically, I can say the following. P minus. Now we're looking for the vertical component of this force. If we consider that now, it's the adjacent of a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of 10 and an angle of 45. So that's going to be 10 cos 45 and that will be equal to 0. This is in equilibrium. There's no vertical acceleration. So this is not shooting off this way and it's not now going through the plane. So we're looking now for the vertical component of this force, and that's P uh, minus 10 cos 45 is equal to 0. So P is going to be equal to 10, and then the cos of 45, as we've seen earlier, is root 2 over 2. So we can say that P is going to be 5 root 2 newtons. That is what we call an exact value. If you wanted to find that now as a decimal answer, we could plug that in 5 root 2, 
and that's going to give us 7.07. .07. So I say P is equal to 7.07 .07 newtons, and that's given to three significant figures. If we now find Q, we can do that by resolving horizontally. So if we resolve horizontally, we will have Q minus. What we're looking for now is the horizontal component of this force. If the vertical component in this particular case is going to be 10 cos 45, this is going to be now 10 sine 45. There are no other forces acting on that, and the resultant will be 0 if in equilibrium. So Q is going to be equal to 10, then the sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, so we can see we've got the same value. So slightly easier than the last one, we end up now with 5 root 2 newtons, which gives us now that Q is going to be equal to 7.07 newtons, and that's now to three significant figures. So all we've done now is resolved horizontally and vertically. I've put this now as a forces diagram on the plane where the plane is given to be horizontal. So essentially what I've done with this, let's just spin it around, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and group this together. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, Let's just spin it around anyway. That's just going to move slightly. But all I've done is gone ahead and done that. And then I've just moved that like so and put that in place. So I've just looked at it like so. You don't have to. You can look at it as a plane. And then we've just gone ahead and resolved. So there are two examples now of looking at statics in equilibrium and how to find missing forces and angles.